The one needs okay, the disco anything lights. involving males and the word frolic, gay. <laughs> they just need the they disco reg- night. Just disco lights. That's all they need. You know. <laughs> they regularly groom each other, which means they're hairdressers, gay. Mm. <laughs> and they pair off together every night, wow. gay. <laughs> Hair bonding my ass. It's gay. (laughs) It's a complicated issue, (laughs) but they seem to be in a loving relationship of some sort. Gay! Just say it! It's gay! Yep. And it's okay to be gay. Yes, it is, especially if you're a penguin, because penguins are cute. Yeah, except if you're in the breeding program, that kind of sticks you know, stuff in this in the works. Yeah. Yeah, right. a little bit. Of course, again, when I first read the story, I was kind of like, if they're gay or hair bonded. <laughs> that goes in inverted commas, then, that one. Um, pair bonded. Yeah. yeah. Pair bonded. See, see, you're starting to get it now. I don't, I don't, I don't even have to tell you that I'm doing it now. <laughs> but, I mean... What happens if, you know, one of these boy penguins looks at a girl penguin and goes, uh-uh, honey, I am not doing that. Mm. <laughs> Let me go back to Pedro. This is just a nightmare. You're a girl. Ew. Girl cooties. <laughs> Ew, I want my boy penguin back. Mm. Holla. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh. brings us to the next story. Oh, okay. Oh, yay, I get this one. Why did I put this one next? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, There is no segue. Well, there could be, but we're not going to make it. <laughs> well, we might not make it, but he might. <laughs> but um, shh. Okay, I'll read this, and I'll read as much as it takes, I think. They're coming to take him away! (laughs) Okay. You may never, ever, ever want to go into a Starbucks toilet after you have heard this. Mm, Hang on. (coughs) Pardon me, need to bet. Okay, man vows to masturbate in every Starbucks toilet in New York. Now, I don't know what... Starbucks is like in New York, but here there's like maybe three. So I'm guessing there's a few more Starbucks in New York than there are in Brisbane. Probably. Okay. This is from October 28th. When New Yorkers are buying their coffee from Starbucks, it's unlikely they're thinking just how erotic are the toilets. Yeah, one man is, and he has made it his mission to visit, defile, and rate every Starbucks bathroom in New York City. That's 298 in total. Holy freaking dooly. Okay, that's a lot of coffee. The New Yorker, who calls himself... Yeah, I'm not saying that. (laughs) We shall name him Mr. P but there's another one behind it. Um, Mr. PP. <laughs> that. Uh, has been tweeting his progress since he started in <laughs> December last year. There's a word for people who tweet, and it's got twit, and he must be one. Okay, today's Starbucks visit is rated a four. Oh, my God. I'm not reading That's why that. I was laughing. <laughs> Today's Starbucks visit is rated as a four boner. Yeah. Spacious, <laughs> clean, excellent coffee, strong Wi-Fi, no interruptions, and one hot chick. Okay, if I was the hot chick, I'd be going, I'm changing to glory jeans. Okay. <laughs> In a podcast that's since been removed... Do you wonder why? He has explained that bathrooms lose points if they are unclean or if a person knocks on the door and interrupts him. <sighs> okay, his mission isn't endearing him to Starbucks employees, you think, especially those who have to clean the toilets. Uh huh. 
One wrote on Starbucks gossip, glorious for everyone uh, of him who decides to mention it. Think of how many don't. That didn't make any bloody sense. But anyway, we have one regular who comes in for about an hour a day and stares. Yes, stares and studies the baristas working. Wouldn't it just be easier to go to a college and learn how to be a barista? (laughs) Okay. So, if this guy comes to Australia, you'll need to tell me so I can avoid Starbucks better than I do now. Because one of my one of my goals this year, or maybe not even so much this year, just ever, is to walk into the Starbucks in Brisbane City, because I can't read the boards, because my vision is absolutely shocking, and they've got everything written in tiny, tiny, tiny little writing, and it's right up on the back wall, to walk in and go, I'd like a coffee, please, and have them go, um, it's Starbucks, and I'll be like, uh-huh, and they'll be like, what type of coffee, and I'll be like, okay, what do you got? They'd be like, blah, 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 and I'd be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll have a tea. <laughs> That's kind of like when I worked at um, TCBY. We sold nothing but yogurt instead of. We didn't sell ice cream. We sold yogurt, like frozen yogurt. Yummy. And we had so many people come into the store going, yeah, I'd like. um. I'd like some ice cream, please. And I was like, well, then go to the next store. There's a Baskin Robbins down the road. Well, no, there wasn't. Uh, we had a Maggie <laughs> Moose, but I didn't know if you'd know what that was, so I didn't say it. No, but the closest thing is a Baskin Robbins. We have those here. There's actually one within walking distance. So, yeah. I, think I like Baskin Robbins. <gasps> we have an Eskimos, which has frozen custard now. Oh, my God. I've never had frozen custard. That sounds nasty. It's good. It really is. It's awesome. Yeah. We've got a cold rock, which is, I suppose, like, what do you call it? Cold cold stone. stone. Yeah. Basically the same thing, I'd say, where they just have the big slab of, slab of marble and they sort of splop the ice cream down on it and then, like, chuck a whole bunch of crap in it. So whether it be Oreos or gummy bears or whatever, and then they just smush it all together. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. Mm-hmm. But you can buy, like, a litre of ice cream for, like, the price of one of the kitty cones. <laughs> and you're like... Ah. <sighs> okay. No segue. <laughs> well, there is if you're getting a kitty cone. Because you might want to buy one today for your child, maybe. Well, I was going to say that... um. One time when I was in New Mexico, I had um, frozen. I had a frozen custard thing. It had cheesecake and strawberries in it, and I thought it was God. Speaking <laughs> of God, <laughs> yes, nice. <laughs> she does it again. Woo-hoo! Anyway, why kids who turn eleven next Friday might be God, which is actually today. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, so anyone having their birthday today, listen up. You're God. Maybe. Maybe. The most important date in history of New York's Corduroy Appreciation Club is fast approaching, and the club is still searching for its messiah. The band of fabric fans are seeking a child who turns 11 on November 11th or 11-11-11. The date the club says most closely resembled the ribs of its... <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. This is so... Corduroy. This is so pair bonding. It's unreal. <laughs> 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 of its favorite ridge tex- textile. That child is the messiah of corduroy. Miles Rohan, founder of the club, told the New York Daily News. We liken it to finding the Dalai Lama. Seriously. Seriously. Oh, my God. The New York-based club said it had already been contacted by twins from Wisconsin who will turn 11 on November 11th, but are looking for a locally-based child to attend their grandest meeting in Manhattan on that date. The child will be installed on... You're going to install a child? It's not right. That's kind of illegal, I think. Just as long as you plug it in correctly. 
<laughs> and do it with a with a, a certified electrician. <laughs> yes. Don't try this at home, kids. Don't try this at home. No. Anyway, the child will be installed on a throne and generally treated like a like textile royalty after being carried into the meeting. Members who attend the meeting will also be required to wear three items of clothing made of corduroy instead of the regular two. The club celebrates twice yearly on January 1st or 1-1 and November 11th and has been and has about 250 members. Seriously? Holy dooly. I'm thinking any 11-year-old that has read this is going, yeah, I think I'm just going to skip 11 and just move straight on to 12. That's so pair bonding. <laughs> there ain't no way you're sticking me in corduroy, Ma. No, 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 no. You are not installing me anywhere. <laughs> Dad's not an electrician and neither is that guy. Don't you come near me. <laughs> <laughs> God, can you imagine? There are, three, there are three different types of people who play with electricity. Electricians, fathers, and idiots. <laughs> 